Hey everyone, this is Daniel. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to migrate your Dataverse data using CLI. And CLI stands for Command Line Interface. So it's very important that you know how to do this because yes, you can go ahead and build a solution, whether it is managed or unmanaged, and move it over from a source to the destination environment. And everything does move over except the rows of your Dataverse tables. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through it step by step. The first thing we will do is add the Power Platform extension inside your Visual Studio. And then what is the built-in tool that we have to use? I'll walk you through that. And finally, we will actually move some data over from the source to the destination. So the destination app actually has all the data. Stick around, this is very important. But first, here's my intro video. So what you see on the left is actually a Canvas app. It's part of a solution and it's part of an environment which has the data. In fact, it's also part of an entire tenant altogether. So I packaged the solution, I even moved it as a managed, moved it over to an entire new environment and an entire new tenant. And everything moved over pretty well. All the apps, the flows, all the tables, everything moved over. But you notice that on the left side for this little gallery, it actually has some data coming in. Now, the one on the right, that Canvas app, has the gallery and everything. What it doesn't have is actually the rows of data. Because it has the data versus tables, it doesn't have the rows of data. And that automatically doesn't move over using the solutions concept. You have to have a way to actually move the data over. And that is what I'm gonna show you right now. Let me walk you through that step by step. So I'm on my Windows 11 operating system. You could have a Windows 10 and that's completely fine. But what we need is the Visual Studio Code. This Visual Studio Code is free. And in case you don't have it, I've put the link down in the description below. You can go ahead and click on it, download it and install it. And it comes for different operating systems uh, as well as for the Mac and the uh, OS as well. So now that I'm over here, on the top, click on View and Select Extensions. Click on that extensions. And over here on the list, it'll give you a whole bunch of extensions that are available in the marketplace. Go ahead and do a search for Power Platform, all right? Now, also right now, right now there's two different iterations of it. There is the Power Platform Tools, and then there is the Power Platform Tools Preview. I'm gonna stay a little far away from the, Power Pla the Preview one. I'm gonna stick with the Tools. Uh, there is also an extension pack, which I'll save that for another day. But the Power Platform Tools is pretty popular. I mean, look at over here. It's got the four star rating, over 93,000 downloads. This thing is a tried and tested way. So as you go and click on it, it actually gives you an overview. Now, there is a Microsoft documentation on this as well, uh, but I thought I'll walk you through this video because even the whole icon is actually updated, all right? So it's important that you walk through this. Um, so this is what it is. Love that it actually gives you all the details. We'll be leveraging this very soon. But all I want you to do is go and click on Install. And once the installation goes through, it actually happens really fast. Like I, while I was talking to you, the installation got completed, and you know it got completed because now you have the option to disable and uninstall. That basically means that the installation is completed. Other thing is on the left side right now, you see the icon for Power Platform. So I'm just gonna go and click on that icon over here for Power Platform uh, because we're gonna start leveraging it. Now, one of the things over here it says is that do you wanna add the auth profile, which is the authentication profile, and we will. We will actually need to do one for the source and then we will also need to do one for the destination. So we will actually have two. And that doesn't matter if it's in the same tenant or even if it's a cross tenant, this process really works. So I'm gonna go and click on the X over here so I take that out of my site, go to the top on the terminal, create a new terminal because we're gonna start putting in some code over here. Now I just want you to type in three letters over here. The letters is pack space two space CMT. That is it. Now that you've got that, hit your enter button and that's what I'm gonna do. And the moment you do that, it says launched CMT. And voila, this is your built-in migration tool of the data. Keep in mind, this is only moving the data. This is not gonna migrate your entire uh, solution. You've already taken care of that. This is only gonna take care of the data, the rows inside your Dataverse table. So what I like about this migration tool is that it literally does have the three different steps that we have to do, and they are in this order. So the first thing we have to do is create the schema. Schema is basically the design of the data that needs to be exported. So let's walk through that first, all right? I'm clicking on the radio button for create schema. I'm gonna click on continue. And over here, you have to first decide how you're going to authenticate. Now, 
in my scenario, my sign in for my desktop or the local machine that I have is different from the cloud which I authenticate in to my Microsoft 365 or Azure. Therefore, I have left the default radio button of Office 365 as is, but instead of signing using the sign in as current user, I'm selecting the second one intentionally, okay? And so now after I got that, I'm gonna click on login and the pop-up window comes in. This is great. Now you go ahead and do the authentication that you go ahead and sign into say Power Apps, Power Automate, whatever that you do over there. Um, so I'm just gonna basically do a lot of copying and pasting. Uh, remember, this is the one from the source. So wherever you actually have all that data in your Dataverse table, you know, that rows of data, that destination's authentication you wanna put in. And you will see in my case that I actually have a completely separate username and password that I'm putting in. All right, so I got that in. I'm gonna go ahead and now put in a password. And now I'll go ahead and do a sign in. If everything goes well, it goes to the validation and this window section opens up. And it actually just takes a few extra seconds for this all to populate. You just saw that. All right, so now I've got the default solution, which is not what I want, because my solution was actually called as kudos. So that's the solution that I'm selecting, okay? So you actually want to do the drop down, find your solution, select it, and the moment you do that, on the right, it will actually say select entity. Entity are those Dataverse tables that are tied to your solution. So I have my four, my, my Dataverse tables over here, the four actually Dataverse tables, but the main data that I wanna pull through is the badge, because remember, in the badge, that is where I actually had all of this data in my source environment. So I wanna pull this data. Uh, and that one was actually called as the badge uh, table or entity. So that's what I'm gonna say. I'm just gonna select the badge uh, over here. I'll actually, instead of selecting all of these, all entities, I'm just basically gonna go and say add entity. That way it just takes care of everything. Um, and then after that, I'll click on save and export. Now this is an XML file. Remember that design that we are putting in. So the name that I go ahead and put in is, I call it as the kudos, which is the solution. Then I put in the Dataverse table name, which is the badge. And then afterwards, what it is. You, know, you can go and put in design, you can go and print XML, um, or whatever it is that you want. But I already see that the file type is XML. Uh, so in this case, kudos badge is all I'm gonna put in. I'll click on save. And now it says the schema is complete. Would you like to export the data? I'm actually gonna say no. I'll just click on no. And then I'll go ahead and now X out of this one and it brings me back to the original window. Now I could have exported the data over there as well. That's completely fine. But in order for me to walk you through this process step by step, I've deliberately clicked no over there. You could export the data directly because you already created the schema for the batch. You could export the data. In my case, I'm just showing you this process because say you might already have a schema, uh, the data got corrupted. I'll show you now that, okay, if you just came here to export the data, here's what you do. You click on the export data, you click on continue. All of the pre settings that you did before, they stick, they stay here as is, which is you see that over here. So, but I just have to go ahead and authenticate in. So let me go ahead and put in my uh, username and password to go ahead and finish the successful sign in. And now the first thing you want to do is go ahead and now select that schema file. So that's the one that you selected that. Right, and the next thing is save to data file. So first of all, go and find out where it is that you're gonna save, and by default, it puts in the data.zip as the file name. So go ahead and replicate similar to what you did for the schema. So I'm gonna go and say kudos badge, and then I'll leave the data.zip as is. That way I'll know this is the kudos solution, the badge table, and it's just the data. So I'll click on save, and now I'm gonna click on export data. This is where it actually goes and takes all those rows of data and exports it. And it gives me a quick update over here. It says that the batch, which is 26 rows added to the export set, everything was successful. All the checks are green. We are looking good. So I'm gonna now go and click on exit. Now we come to the last step, which is import data. Import data is going to happen now in your destination location, which in my case is a completely separate tenant and in that tenant, a separate environment. So I'm gonna click on that radio button, which is the import data, click on continue. I like that it actually sticks with the original settings. So I go and click on our login. Here, I have to actually put in new credentials altogether. So I'm gonna go ahead and now get that in. Went through it successfully, and there you go. Now in this case, it is asking me, which environment do you wanna select it in? So in my environment, I'm actually going to put in the model driven stuff. Got that selected. I'm gonna go and click on the login. It's going ahead and validating initializing and now it's telling me, hey, go ahead and select where is that zip file that you have. So now I go ahead and pick that zip file, which is the one we just created, click on open 
and it says the import file was found, ready to import one entity, which is correct because we only have the badge one. Now I click on the import data and there you go. It selected 26 records, which you and I know is correct. And now the import process has begun. It's actually going and pulling in all the data. I mean, it actually has the data. It's going and importing that into our destination, the new environment. And there you go, it went and finished it immediately. But the ultimate test is, first of all, I go to exit out of this one. Then I go ahead and now go to my destination. See, that's the destination one. Remember the one that was empty over here? If I go ahead and now do a refresh, it is loading. I should see all the data coming in. Yes, the data came through. Now granted that the created on was the day the created came in, so that timestamp is a little different. But the final assurance that this worked is let's go and take a look at the app itself. So I'll switch the tabs. I'll actually go outside a little bit. Um, let me actually just refresh this part altogether so that the app actually reloads. This is my Canvas app. Click on Get Started. In my Get Started, I'd like to go ahead and recognize Finn. So I'll select Finn. It looks good. Click on Next and voila, the data loaded. So that badge data was table loaded, which is why in the app, these gallery settings look good, which is perfect. Now I can go and select whatever is the kudos type I want to give and continue using the app the way it was designed. Do you get it now? Now you understand why important it is for you to know this process of migrating just the data because the solution moves everything else over apps, flows, the tables, the relationships, everything. It does not move the data. But now I've walked you through it. And the important thing is you can pick and choose which table you want to move. So in the process, say in your production side, some table data got stale or corrupted, completely fine. You can go ahead and now import fresh data in because you will already have the same schema file. So you don't need to make any changes to that. Now, the only thing I want to end by saying is that this is now a little bit either on the developer or IT professional side. Uh, so if you're just a citizen developer, you could either skill up, learn how to do this because I've shown you the step by step process, or you could go ahead and get your IT professional or developer's assistance. Either way, I've shown you the process. You are good to go. Hopefully you start to leverage this. So now you can go ahead and use the solutions concept and also move the data. And as always, keep using Power Apps. Hello, hello, hello. So if you like this video, go ahead and click on that subscribe button and smash that like button. Also, if you have a few extra seconds, can you go ahead and put in a comment, either say something nice or give me ideas for my next video. And until then, see ya.